يحزنون وقالت اليهود ليست النصارى على شيء وقالت النصارى وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء وهم يتلون الكتاب كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون مثل قولهم فالله يحكم بينهم يوم القيامة فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم ولله المشرق والمغرب فأينما تولوا فثم وجه الله إن الله و فأينما تولوا فثم وجه الله إن الله ب إن الله واسع عليم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وترك الأمة على المحجة البيضاء على الطريقة الواضحة الغراء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ أنها إلا حالك أو ضال فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم وأكرم وزد وتحنن على هذا النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحابته الغر الميامين وعلى كل من سار على منواله وتمسك بهديه بإحسان إلى يوم الخلود والقرار والدين أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا جماعة المسلمين أرحب بنا وبكم جميعا إلى هذا المجلس الميمون السنوي لعقد التفسير الرمضاني نساله تبارك وتعالى ان يوفقنا جميعا الى قول الحق وفهم الحق والامل بالحق وان يمن علينا ان نكون من المغفورين المرحومين في هذه الساعات الميمونه والليالي الطاهره انه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه we make progress ان شاء الله تعالى and the surah is um, surah number 77, is that correct? Surah Al-Mursalat. Naam? 87? Mm, no. 87, 80 is Abba Sawat Allah. Barakallahu feekum. Mm. So, in al muttaqin there is um, ayah number 41. Barakallahu feekum. اقرأ اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم ان المتقين في ظلال وعيون وفواكه مما يشتهون كلوا واشربوا هنيئا 
بما كنتم تعملون إنا كذلك نجزي المحسنين الله سبحانه وتعالى says بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the ever gracious the ever merciful إن المتقين في ظلال وعيون The righteous ones, the doers of good things, في ظلال shall be in ظلال. ظلال that is shades of the paradise. وعيون and fountains, springs. Now, the analysis again. وفواكه مما يشتهون they will be abundantly misapplied with fawake, fruits. Mimma ishtahun, out of what they desire, what they want. And you know, in the world, you may need something, but be given what you don't want. But in Al-Jannah, Allah says, وفواكه مما يشتهون, out of what they want, what they desire. Again, كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ They will be told, being set on to them. كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا Eat ye and drink. هَنِيئًا in satisfaction. Pleasantly, out of your desire. Alright? From, because of what you used to do. Look at it. كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَيْ بِسَبَبِ مَا قَدَّمْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةِ On account of your deed during the previous life. بِمَا كُنْتُمْ suggest past tense. كُنْتُمْ كَانَ يَكُونُ كُنْ كَانَ Alright? Eat and drink pleasantly out of satisfaction on account of what you did. If they had not done good things, things like this wouldn't have been said unto them. لِأَنَّ الْجَزَاءَ مِنْ جِنْسِ الْأَمَلِ وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعَمَدًا Then Allah says, إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ It is like this. We reward the doers of good. Allah مَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ حَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إلا الإحسان نعم نكس آية ويل يومئذ للمكذبين that day on the deniers نكس آية قلوا وتمتعوا قليلا إنكم مجرمون this is آية number 46 it will be said to the criminals the doers of bad things قُلُوا وَتَمَتَّعُوا قَلِيلًا إِنَّكُمْ مُجْرِمُونَ Eat ye and enjoy a little. You are indeed criminals. You see, those who are doing bad things, they are being told, قُلُوا وَتَمَتَّعُوا قَلِيلًا Eat and enjoy a little. Time is coming when you won't see all the things. So eat and enjoy yourself just a little. You are in the criminals. So a believer should not wish to be like this. Being told, eat and enjoy a little. Because even if one is given a lifespan of 1,000 years, it's little compared to the Akhirah. One thousand. Okay? If somebody may live for five thousand years, but at last you are dying, it is little when you compare to the endless life of the hereafter. So Allah is telling them, Kulu watamata'u qaleelan bat innakum mujrimoon. Next ayah. 
ويل يومئذ للمكذبين Woe on that day be on the deniers نعم وإذا قيل لهم اركعوا لا يركعون وإذا قيل لهم اركعوا لا يركعون This unbelievers when they are commanded kneel down for Allah do prostrate that is irka'u do ruku nil all right as a sign of total subjugation to allah total surrendering to allah that la irka'u uh, they use not to kneel down for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naam then woe that day shall be on the denies and which statement shall they believe after the Quran all right what is it there for them to believe apart from it some people claiming to be the followers of quran only they keep on quoting this ayah allah says for the hadith ba'du you are quoting hadith allah says for the hadith ba'du you know out of laughable ignorance and abject lack of understanding all right we are going inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala to the next surah which is surah to uh, an-naba iqra bismillahir rahmanir rahim amma tasalun anin nabil azim الذي هم فيه مختلفون الله سبحانه وتعالى opens this surah by saying amma yatasalu this is chapter number 78 surah an-naba or the tidings it is surah number like you said 78 having 40 verses and 174 words kalimat 796 letters and the surah is a meccan surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says amma yatasaalun on what have they been asking amma ay amma dha عن اي شيء يتساءل الناس يعني بعضهم بعضا on what have they been asking and question one another نعم عن النبا العظيم عن النبا العظيم about the great news the great news نعم الذي هم فيه مختلفون الذي هم فيه مختلفون over which they disagree some say it will come some deny it that is الذي هم فيه مختلفون asking one another questioning about the great news this al qiyama some believe it will come some deny it but the believers believe in its, in its coming now kalla sayalamun kalla sayalamun no they are going to know they shall know now thumma kalla sayalamun certainly they shall come to know now alam naj'al al-ardh mihada haven't we made they are like a carpet or you can say like a resting place mihad li'annahu mahad al-ard mahdan that is why you call the cradle mad 
You say, At-ta'allum min al-mahdi ila al-lahadi. Seeking for knowledge is from the cradle. Is the rapa the moms use in tidying their babies of their back? That is mad. So Allah likens the earth like a mat, something sprayed, or just a resting place where you lie down, you put your properties, and finally you take your dead ones there. Naam. And haven't we made Al Jibala, the mountains, as a stake? Autada, just like the notes, you know, in your car, it is, you know, tied with the stakes. So the jibal are there to hold the earth from moving. That is the hikmah. Allah says, haven't we made al-jibal autada? No, Allah has made it. No. Haven't we created you as uh, into peace? Peers, peers, as waja. There is a similar ayah to this one. There is Subhan al Khalaq al Jukullah. Subhan al Ladi Khalaq al Azwaja Kulla Mim Matum Bitul Ardu wa Min Fusim wa Mim Mala Yalamun. Allah says Subhan al Ladi Khalaq al Azwaja Kulla. مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون. Glory be to Allah that created things in peace. Everything is in peace. We explained it some few days back. Okay. So the same here. Allah says وخلقناكم أزواجا. We made you in peace. Now. وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا And has made your sleeping a source of resting. When somebody is tired, he needs to go and take a nap. You call a nap, just sleep. After sleeping, you, be, you become what? Rejuvenated, revitalized. You become more powerful. Okay, because the boredom is taken from you. So a norm is subata. It's from a sapt. Sapt is to cut off, cut something away. From there you have sabbat. All right? So take a break. That is subata. Allah said we have made your sleeping as a means of what? Resting. Now. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا We have made a layla, the night, libasa, as a clothing for you. You see, in the night, it is as if you have been clothed. Somebody may appear in a kind of an appearance that he wouldn't appear during the day. So the night is like a cloth given to us by Allah the Almighty. Even the wrongdoers prefer the darkness, isn't it? The houseman says, Dere rigarumugu. Dere rigarumugu. That is the night, is the cloth for the wrongdoing person. He wouldn't like to see light. He prefers darkness. That's why security law is very important. It exposes the criminal. But for the good one, Allah said, we made your night as a cloth. During the night, you just wake up, you pray. You don't even want somebody to see you. You are just covered by the night. So, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا نعم. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا This is ayah number 11 in this chapter number 78. We made the day as a means for livelihood. Because during the day, you go to the market, livelihood. You go to the farm, you go to your office and work to earn your salary. Allah says we made the night, the day for livelihood. Taxi drivers go and drive. Somebody selling things in grocery. I mean, Allah said we have made the day for your livelihood. And it is correct. The night, go and take a rest. These two things are there.
taking count on you day in day out day in night out one day you are normal there two things work against you that is what ibn adres says he says in those new things if they overcome some something adnayahu they take it closer to extinction that is the day and night they are always new so day and night if they face a newborn baby he develops be it later he is gone two things but they are new but they make something new grow old in al jadidayni idha mastawlaya ala al jadid adnaya lil bila those new things if they face somebody they take it to an ex extinction so that is hikmah naam wa ja'al wa banayna fawqakum sab'an shidada wa banayna fawqakum sab'an shidada Above you, we have constructed the seven layers so strong, the seven heavens. Above you, who builds the heavens? The skies, Allah the Almighty. Allah calls it what? Shidada, very, very strong. They are strong because have you seen any jet bomber breaking it? Any nuclear arsenal? Any nitrogen bomb? Never. Allah says they are Shidada. But despite their strength, being strong on Al Qiyama, they will be scattered and shattered. La ilaha illallah. Naam. Wa ja'alna sirajan wa haja. Wa ja'alna sirajan wa haja. And we have made therein a burning lamp. Burning lamp. What is that lamp? The sunlight. I was asking you, what have the scientists calculated the, the traveling of the light, sunlight? In a second, I think I listened to one scientist in about 187. Now? In a second, light travels. La ilaha illallah. In a second. So Allah calls this Rajan Wahaja. Sun. Is a source of what? An energy? Yeah, source of energy. What, what again? Does sunlight affect the growth of plants through photosynthesis, chlorophyll? Allah Akbar. Does sun affect the growth of old people? Vitamin D. Beautiful. So you can see it has incalculable benefits but it's far, 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 far away from us. On Al Qiyamah, it will be nothing. A different thing will be brought there. Allah calls it what? Sirajan Wahaja, a burning light. They are saying even the moon borrows its light from. Is it correct scientifically? Is it correct that the moon borrows its light from the sun? Any proof? No? So it reflects. Yeah, scientists, let's give us full further explanation. How did it reflect it? Allah calls it in this ayah, ayah number 13. We made Sirajan Wahaja, a burning, actually burning what? A lamb. You see, Allah says, Give me the ayah. There. This is chapter number 10. What is the ayah? To the end of it. It is Allah who has made the sun. The uh, born in excellent lightning, but welcome, Nora. But the moon just Nora, 
Here comes his explanation. They are saying Noor is a reflection taken from the Diyar. Al-Daw'u Akbar min al-Noor. You see it? So the sun emits its extreme burning lamp with multifaceted, multidimensional benefit, drivable. You've mentioned some of him. But the moon just reflects that one. That is why the size of the sun is by far much bigger. The scientists can give us the size, all right? Then the moon. But they are all, they are both celestial, celestial what? But not terrestrial. But on Al-Qiyamah, they will come to nothing, nonsense. Allahu Akbar. They are to Allah's servants. The sun rises and the sun sets on daily basis. It is also worship in Allah. The new moon emerges very thin. It grows by the day, by the count until it becomes rounded and full. And then it is taken back gradually. That is your life. You are starting as a young man, a small, until you reach the age of 40, and then you are withdrawn until you are no more. It's an ayah for you. It's a food for thought for you. Don't allow the world to just deceive you. Look at the moon. It says something about you. Even the sun, when the sun rises, very early in the morning, you can even look at it. It was not then, very weak. But by the time it traveled midway, midday, can you see it with the naked eye? That is the strength. Later, it is reduced. When it sets, you can look at it. That is how you are. Allahu alladhi khalaqakum min da'fin. Give me the ayah. الله الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة نعم ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبا يخلق ما يشاء وهو العليم القدير الله الذي خلقكم من ضعف أو من ضعف ثم جعل من بعض ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعض قوة ضعفا أو ضعفا وشيبا يخلق ما يشاء وهو العليم القدير إن شورا It is Allah who created you نعم from room throat room أفوان Allah created you from weakness, min dafin. After the weakness, now he places strength. After the strength, he places weakness and gray hair. He does what he wishes in Surah number 30. That, is, that explains how you are. Even a car. It starts new one, flashy, <laughs> attractive, the talk of the town. Oh, it's a flashy car. Can I say it? Later, you see it by the mechanic shop. Finally, junkyard, grounded. Next one. You too will be dumped in the grave one day. New generation will come. Can't we think about this? Waste time, luxuries, unnecessary things, flimsy things you want to enjoy. Enjoyment awaits you there if only you have the Iman. May Allah reinforce our Iman and determination. The ayah under which this comes is ayah number one, 13. وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجًا وَأَنزَلْنَا وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا. الله says وأنزلنا إذا بدأ آية وأنزلنا من المعصرات ماء ثجاجا. وأنزلنا we sent down that is أنزل. 
we sent down minal mu'sirati from the rain clouds any cloud containing rain is called mu'sirat that's the beauty of Quran, Quran word. the one that is empty is not called mu'sirat so I cherish one translation in Hausa mu'sirat qosasungira gizay because they are made to be replete, full of water, about to calm down. Ma'an, we sent water, fajr, that constantly keeps on pouring, pouring, pouring. Who does that? Meteorologists, the weather forecaster will tell you there's going to be rainfall in New York today. Rainfall. Is it necessary to come? It's not. One brother was telling me that uh, during his activities of uh, driving, someone would be complaining if the rainfall. What have you told us that's going to be rainfall today? That he is complaining. Why haven't you told us there will be rain today and there is rain? I said, that is because they don't have the iman. Rain is in the hand of Allah the Almighty. The scientists may tell you. Today is going to rain today. But the one with ultimate decision is not a scientist. They call it forecasting. I'm just forecasting. Just like a gynecologist who tells you your wife is going to put to bed by source of date through scanning machine. He tells you the sex of the baby, male or female. And the EDD, you know EDD? What do you call it here in America? EDD, expected day of delivery. Is it true? Why do you say expected? Why don't you say DDD? The definitive day of delivery. It can't be definite. You may forecast, but you're proved wrong. So make everything back to Allah, the honor of everything. Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُؤْسِرَاتِ مَا أَنْ ثَجَّجَ For what, Ya Allah? Then Allah explains the reason. لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا So that we may bring forth. The ulama call li la mu'illat al-fi'il لِلْإِلَّ It explains causality so as to bring forth. Be he habban, a grain, grain, wanabata and vegetation. With the water, you have grains. With the water, you have the vegetation. Allah does it. It's not somebody. Next ayah. Wajannatin alfafa. Wajannatin alfafa and gardens of entwined growth. We made from water, from water we make jannatin. Gardens, alfafa, this one overlapping the other. Alfafa. Such that if you're traveling, you see a lot of plantations, you know, in twins. So thick, you can't see even the interior on account of the vegetative cover. Allah says, I am the one doing that, not you. I have just given you the technology, but I am the maker, the owner, the everything, the alpha and omega. If only you have the belief. That is why the Muslim is always given everything. Next ayah. <laughs> Certainly the day of judgment. The day of decisive reckoning, Kana Miqata has an appointed determination. It's appointed. It will come at a time appointed. That's Miqata. Naam. Yawma yunfakhu fi suri fata'tuna afwaja. Yawma yunfakhu fi suri fata'tuna afwaja. It is a day when it will be blown. The trumpet will be blown and you will come in multitude. 
multitude. La ilaha illallah. People of different classes, different geographies, different whatever. Afwaja, afwaja, afwaja. Naam. وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابًا وَفُتِحَتِ أو وَفُتِحَتِ بِالتَّجْدِ In قراءه أخرى And the, the, the sky or the heaven Then will be open Become many gates أبوابا نعم وَسُيِّرَتِ الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ سَرَابًا And Al-Jibal, the mountains will be removed, becoming just like a mirage. You know mirage? Is mirage water? It's not water. So Allah will make Al-Jibal like a dust, like a mirage. The more, the further you go near the mirage, <laughs> the more illusionary it is. If anybody feels he will drink from mirage, then he will die out of thirst. Any plant you want to water it by the mirage, that plant will go to dry away. That is how the work of unbelievers is. Any non-believer that doesn't believe Allah, whatever he does is waste of fun. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيعَةٍ كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيعَةٍ يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَاءً That very place in Surah number 24, Surah An-Nur وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَسَرَابٍ بِقِيعَةٍ يَحْسَبُهُ الظَّمْآنُ مَاءً حتى إذا جاءه the disbelievers, their deed in the eyes of Allah is like a mirage. The thirsty one assumes it to be water. Until he reaches it, now he comes to know it is but just an illusion. That is mirage. So one shair says, لَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ يَعْتَادُ شُرُبَ الصَّرَابِهَا زود زهرة كان السراب شرابها زود زهرة كان السراب شرابها Any plant that relies on drinking from a sarab it dries away زود زهرة كان السراب شرابها نعم إن جهنم كانت مرصادا. This is ayah number twenty-one. Allah says, إن جهنم أعوذ بالله من جهنم. أعوذ بالله من جهنم. Allah says, إن جهنم certainly جهنم كانت مرصادا has been lying in wait, just waiting. Waiting for it to pray. That is Mirsada. The hellfire is there waiting. So do as you wish. Some become hypocrites, munafiqun. For example, part of the munafiq, you see a Muslim going to people in masjid in the name of spying for somebody. Just waiting hereafter for somebody's world. Somebody gives you money, wealth, you eat it with a pain back. Somebody killing life unnecessarily. Ah, breaking promises. Sending your eyes as you please. Placing your hand on property not belonging to you. Showing bad behavior to your neighbors and the like. Allah says, Inna jahannama kanat, kanat. We've got a long time. Mirsada is waiting in ambush. Or waiting, is lying in waiting. There will be a time when people will be thrown into jahannama. Wa taqulu hal mazid. Give me the ayah. يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَا لِمْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ Allah says in surah number 50, surah to Qaf, 
when we shall say to jahannam halim talati wa taqulu hal min mazid it will be said to her are you okay jahannam have you taken your your full are you full it will ask hal min mazid any increment ya allah any addition that i am ready to take so the scholars are saying there are two meanings to this either it is asking out of astonishment oh despite what i have eaten there are still criminals ya rab how dare people disobey allah that's the first meaning it was it will be asking in an astonishment so hal min mazid so there are most still ya rab i have taken my full still there is no more oh it is asking out of insatiable desire i need more i need more ya rab i want to crush more in either case isn't good for the believer yawma naqul jahannam halim talati wa taqul hal min mazid na'udhu billahi min jahannam next aya litaghina ma'aba litaghina ma'aba but for the transgressors at-taghin alladhi taghā at-taghin is from taghā inna lamā taghā al-mā hamalnākum fi al-jāriyah when the water crosses the boundary so the one doing taghāwa is somebody crossing Allah's boundaries stop here you go let us at-taghīn So we pray we are not among the taghin inshallah ta'ala. So Allah is saying litaghina ma'aba for the transgressors it will be a place of return. They are returning back because ma'aba is from al-awd. They are returning purely back to jahannam. Naam. La bithina fiha ahqaba. La bithina fiha ahqaba. لابثين منصوب بالفتحة بإتيان الياء حال لأنه حال والحال منصوب في كل وقت لابثين فيها أحقاب to remain in it permanently for many times because أحقاب means ages unending according to the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah the paradise and hellfire are of unending nature they will never end There are some heretical people, bid'a people, who say, no, one day, Jannah will come to an end. And the hellfire, they are lying against the teachings. Be careful. They are there permanently. If it is Jannah, it's permanent. Oh Allah, grant Al-Jannah to us. Out of your mercy, we know our deeds are quite short of reaching what is needed. Yeah. Next ayah. لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا in hell fire they will never test burden anything cold no any coolness ولا شرابا no anything to be drunk no any drinking this is very difficult nothing cold and nothing to be given to them for them to drink to soothe their difficulty naam illa hamiman wa ghassaqa the food will be just hot water if you say hot maybe you are just making it simple you are simplifying the word you call it what scalding water scald s c a l d i n g scalding ferociously dangerously hot burning that the food wa ghasaqa and a food called ghasaqa purulence what the purulence the essence is a mixture of uh, contaminated blood that gives negative and offensive and unbearable smell that is ghasaqa purulence that shall be their food 
La ilaha illallah. Na'udhu billahi min thalik. Next ayah. It is an appropriate recompense. Jaza and wifaqa. The deed, it was done to them. It's a tit for tat. It's a good game they say in the world here. As you do, you shall see. Just like a student in a university, the level of your efforts maybe is likely to fetch you the marks. Is that correct? In Africa, when the rainfall has arrived, rainy season, we call it Damina, people in the villages rush to the farmlands. Isn't it? According to your commitment in planting the expectation of your harvest, unless if something happens out of Allah's power. Somebody planting three sack of, say, rice as seedlings. It's not like somebody planting just a handful of seedlings. We expect the one with three sacks to have what? A bumper harvest. That is the life. Yeah. He that walks hard, there are chances of getting bigger. So they are saying the law of nature respects nobody. Is that correct? Just like somebody sleeping early, you sleep by, say, 8 o'clock. There are chances of you waking up early than somebody sleeping by, say, 12 o'clock. That's it. These are the laws that Allah has placed in human beings. And there is no, this is Allah's sunnah. So Allah said, Jaza'an wifaqa. Jaza'an wifaqa. Scientifically speaking, if I, let me tell you this, if I should bring a cup of tea, a cup of tea, is it big? Cup of tea, tea cup. Is that big? All right. I bring tea cup with water inside it. But the water is half the size of the cup. And I bring 10 cube of sugar. I drop one cube in the water, the second cube, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Is the water quantity reducing or increasing? Or reducing? Is the water, the liquid, receding or is it getting increased? Really? I'm talking about, no, no, I'm talking about the water itself. I keep on dropping. I drop one cube, one cube of sugar, second cube, third, up to ten. Are you telling me that the, the, the liquid of the water, the, the, the water itself, will remain the same? I'm, talking, I'm not talking about the taste, the taste. I'm talking about the water. Is the quantity get decreased or increased? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. If it gets increased, that means the cube is not absorbing it. Beautiful. They're beautiful. Because the cube is absorbing the water. Is that correct? That's what I'm saying. The first cube will just melt down. Then I throw the second, the third. Let's say I am draw, I'm just dropping into about 20 cubes. The quantity of water will definitely get decreased. Because the cube is what? Is absorbing to such a point that one cube, if you drop it, will just you'll take it without any touch of water. That is called what? Saturation point. In science, they call it a saturation point. I don't know if you're catching me. You get me? So don't tell me the water quantity getting increased. Getting increased how? They get decreased. That is simple law of nature, they say. But I say, simple law of nature created by the maker of the nature. Don't tell me mother nature. 
Who created the, the, the nature itself? So I am saying everything has a simple law. Your car has 260 speedometer. 260. And you're cruising at, here you say what? Not 100, 25. <laughs> but you are just running dangerously. Dangerously. And you knock somebody, a'udhu billah, may Allah put it. And he is dead. He said, Allah, 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 kulli shayin qad, as Allah wished it. Did Islam ask you to behave in this way? Things are in their proper order. Snake is created by. Chicken is created by. Which of the two will you like to have it in your room? The chicken. <laughs> Why? <laughs> they are all made by Allah. Simple rule. If you tell me snake is my friend because it's Allah's creation, okay. Tried. You will see how that friendship is going to be. So Allah has given common sense to determine what is good and what is bad. I am saying in the light of this ayah, everything has its own natural course of thinking. Which ayah? Can we finish the surah today? It's not possible. Next ayah. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا You see, we've talked in the light of jaza and wifaqa, cause and effect. Under it, I made the explanations. Then Allah said, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا Because the, not, the, the unbelievers who will be in the hellfire, they used not to expect a day of accounting. They were denying hisab, denying that a day will come when you are going to stand before Allah on personal accountability. So they were denying the account. Naam. They deny our verses with emphatic denial. Because will be kidhaba. Kidhaba Mazdar. Ida Okida Al Fi'il Binafsi Mazdar Binafsi Al Fi'il Ada Yamfi Al Majaz. So they deny our verses emphatically. Naam. Wa kulla shayin ahsayna hu kitaba. Wa kulla shayin whereas everything. Ahsaynahu Kitaba has been enumerated in writing. Everything has been written, documented. You are years in this on the face of the earth. It's documented. The amount of water you will drink with Allah has been calculated. The amount of apple you will ever eat is not by Allah. You are breathing. Everything Ahsaynaw has been enumerated. Kitaba in writing. Nothing. You are walking. Walking is in writing. How many times will you enter a restaurant? It's written. Wakulla shayin ahsaynaw. Kitaba. Fadhuku. فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا It will be said to them, فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا Test, we shall never increase or add to you anything إِلَّا عَذَابًا But chastisement, but punishment. Now. إِنَّ لِلْمُدْ تَقِينَ مَفَازَ إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازَ Certainly for the righteous ones, for those who fear Allah, for those who keep their duties to Allah, mafaza have a righteous attainment, a place where they will attain prosperity, endless bliss, because mafaza is al-makan. مكان يقوا فيه الفوز 
اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين نكست آية ما شاء الله هي زين سينز دا آية استوكينا بات الجنة ليس لايدا الجنة بيها إن شاء الله This reminds me of uh, our great scholar in Kano May Allah mercy on him When his qari was reading Quran for in during Ramadan Whenever the mention of Jahannam comes He says, Ya Sheikh, we stop you I said, so we keep on going out Allah is going to go out Which is He said, no, no, no Stop in Jahannam Go next ayah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izdamma yasifun. Wa salamun ala musalim. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wa iyaakum. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it is our turn to give dearly to the masjid, inshaAllah, before we go to our Q&A session. As the Sheikh has just explained to us, please give dearly for Ramadan. Everybody should try. Give your quota every single day because this is the month of multiplication. Anything that you give, you get is in, in, in multiple, in multitudes. So please give. We have barely a week or so to go out of Ramadan. So let us uh, compete with each other by giving sadaqa for the sake of Allah, please. And then we keep on reminding our brothers and those who want to uh, sponsor iftar, inshallah, please try and see the management or write your name on the board and inshallah is going to be uh, taken care of. So please, fi sabirillahi. Fi sabirillahi lillahi wa rasuli. Fi sabirillahi. And then we keep on praying. I always pray that may Allah give our Sheikh more life, more health, long life, and then help his family to make him strong. And may Allah add more wisdom to his capacity of understanding. I'm telling you, without the help of Allah, none of us could be able to even come here and listen the way he explained the Quran. May Allah bless all of us, inshallah. Uh, we go to the question straight away. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A husband divorces his wife and she was doing her idda, that is the confirming period. Then uh, all of a sudden uh, he dies. Will she inherit him? Okay, in the first instance, if um, the man divorces his wife, are you seeing during Okay, what you are doing the idda, the waiting period, and the man dies, will she inherit him? It depends on the category of the divorce. Listen carefully. It depends on the class, the category of the divorce. All right? Divorce is of two kinds. There is revocable and irrevocable divorce. There is talaqun raji'i and talaqun ba'in. Wal ba'in ala marhalatayn. Bainuna suhra wa bainuna kubra. So if the divorce is once, once, he has divorced for the first time, that is number one. And she is within the waiting period before completing the three blots. He dies, yes, she is going to do Ida for him, and he will surely inherit him. Is that clear? But if, after the divorce, she has finished the three cycles, وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوْفَوْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجٍ يَتَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَلَّا وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ إِتْرُ الْأَبْسَ ثَلَثَ قُرُوْ Those women divorce they should wait for three consecutive blots. She has finished it. Though you can marry her back, but you didn't until she has finished the cycle, then you die. There is no idda on her. Is that clear? So for her to do idda for you, 
to inherit you, the divorce has to be revocable, raja'i, and before the completion of the cycle of three bloods. Wallahu alam. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam. May Allah increase your knowledge. Uh, my question is, if I pray the wutu prayer during the first part of the night, and then I wake up at the end of the night, how should I pray? That is the tajud uh, with wutu prayer? No, wutu is done but once in a night. You can no. do not do it twice a day. Okay. No. If you feel you have the agility, the capacity, the ability to do more, well, but you cannot do another wutu. Wallahu alam wa bihi tawfiq. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum uh, May Allah increase your knowledge. Wa what are the times when the hands should be raised to the shoulder level or ear level during prayer? If you mean when somebody is starting his prayer after a takbir, he raises his hands. Raising the hand there are three styles to this level. That is a somatic practice. That the palm shoulder should be little above the shoulder level, reaching the, your ears, did the ear? No. The ears region. Not Allahu Akbar. No, Allahu Akbar. This is the most appropriate way, Allahu Akbar. Is it like this? Allah Akbar, like throwing something? No. So the, the first style, some like this is incorrect or oh, much lower, Allah Akbar. It is like this, like I have demonstrated. I don't know if the person asked the question can see us. Wallahu a'lam, wa bihi tawfiq. And then in addition to the question, following question, a follow-up question, he says, is this raising of the hands to be done all throughout the prayer or just the first Opening. The, concerning the opening, that is mandatory. No. But the remaining ones, the scholars differ on that. Some go by saying, whenever you rise up, raise your hand. Every standing and going down, you should raise your hand. One day, Al Imam. Abu Hanifa prayed to Imam al-Awza'i. Imam al-Awza'i, every going down, raises his hand. But Abu Hanifa did it only once. So Abu Hanifa asked him after the prayer, did you want to rise up? you want to fly like a bird? Every time, raise the hand. He said, yes, I wanted to fly Unfortunately, you failed to fly you. They were just like mates. So just to tell you, the first one is the one mandatory. But the remaining, so we are of the view, there are some places you raise your hand. After the one, so when going, you raise your hand. Number one. Allahu Akbar. Sami Allahu liman habida, rabbana lakal hamd. Allahu Akbar. All right? Allahu Akbar. Some say, when you rise for this, Allahu Akbar, rise. That is called a defa. If you don't do it, your prayer is not that bad. It's not. The first one is there to be captured. I think last year, we took time to conduct class on Safat Salat and Nabi here. Yes, next. Ya Sheikh, um, Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum as Salaam wa Ya Sheikh, I enjoy the tafsir for the whole of this month Barakalafik. and then I wish you long life but please yes. I just want to know which is your favorite surah in the whole Quran and if possible why please all of the Quranic surahs are my favorite all so the question why does not even arise next uh, thank you so much so far these are the questions we have uh, online, so our brother here, please, from the Masjid <coughs> congregation. Bismillah. Yes, are women allowed to visit graveyards? This reminds me 
some years, some two years back, 2016 precisely, when I was in the city of Hartford, you're in Connecticut. Please. A, a, brother, please. a brother died, Abdul Rashid. May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah forgive him, Amen. forgive the family he left behind. Amen. A nice young man. He died in Connecticut here. And uh, I was there from New York here. We went to Connecticut for the burial. The point is, we were in the graveyard when I saw some women, Muslim, came. So I told the congregation, allow me to go and see those sisters. I said, why are you here? My sisters, you here? When I began to talk, one of them took to her heel, run away, because she heard the negative consequence. This links me to your question. I say, a woman is not supposed to come graveyard. But the, 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 the judgment is that if it is frequent, the hadith says, La'anallahu zawarat. May Allah's curse be on those women who constantly and perpetually pay visit to the graveyard. Okay, to what extent do we say it's not constantly? It's, it's good we have, we know this. Is it once in a month? In a year? Man can go to the graveyard as many as wishes, but a woman according to Shia shouldn't go. If she goes once in three months, that can be okay. But every now and then, that can fetch for her Allah's anger. Allah's wrath in the light of this hadith. Okay? This also reminds me of a sister in a city here in US in Milwaukee. A brother died and I was the one that led the prayer. We took him to the graveyard. And to my surprise, a woman was there. I talked to her, I said, No, he's my brother. Can't I go there? He said, I am talking Quran, you are talking emotion, I'm giving you ayah. If you insist your brother, go and bring him out. Why did you allow him to die? Bring him out. Maintain your brother. I am telling you next, the text. You are trying to just kind of uh, sentimentalize the issue, sentiments. That is our ignorance act in some people. So I am saying, you have had the explanation. A woman can go, but not constantly. So my understanding, if it is once or three months, it's okay. Why can't you remain in the home? Pray for the dead body. doesn't make any difference. Maintain the rule. Don't say why. You can't ask Allah why. Because the rules, the laws in your country, you cannot ask why. You abide by it, and you ask him because you are intelligent. Subhanallah al-Azim. Next. Next person. Yeah, Sheikh. Hello. Sheikh, I have two questions. Yeah, he said he has two questions. I was somewhere in one year. Right now, I have to find the person to be to pay them back. I can't find him. He owes somebody money. Is that all? No. Somebody's money is with him. He owes somebody money. But unfortunately, up to today, he couldn't find the guy to take his money back. What should he do? That is why when taking somebody's money loan, you do everything necessary. Write his name. Nowadays, phone number. Mm -hmm. Even his email. In case of death. In case of any eventuality, write it. But at times today, I'm sorry, we are careless. We just don't tip, don't pay attention. I can be careless. You can be careless. He can be careless. So for that, the man I take his money, he takes mine, not to be found. 
I can't call him. I don't know his whereabouts. Now I am left with worry. A believer becomes worried. Yeah. Because of the light of his iman. But the other guy doesn't care. That's all. I'm going to eat it. Because of the absence of iman. If you see somebody becoming worried, yeah. We say congratulations. Maybe it's because of iman. What can I do? You have two things. You either take the money, give it sadaqah. Don't eat a single cent out of it. Give it sadaqah to the masjid, to the poor people. Don't eat it. Don't set biscuit or, or, or sweet for your kids. Don't. That is the one. Or take it to any Sharia-based institution. Take the money. Look for the owner. These are the two things. If you give sadaqah out of it and tomorrow the guy returns, tell him, I have been waiting for you, you didn't come. I have given the money as the nation as sadaqah for you. He says, well, I don't have the intention of giving sadaqah, my money. So give it to him. The road of sadaqah is credited in your own account. Next. The same thing I have said. Somebody give you the 15 years, you can't find him. Did you take his information? His particulars? Allah Akbar. Okay, like, like I have said. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Is a Muslim? Mm. Here in New York? And he, did, he didn't tell you when he was moving, he didn't tell you where he was. Mm. The same thing I have said. Keep on keeping the money. Keep on keeping the money or the property. Until such a time that we feel maybe all hopes are dashed. But the issue is that I, the one keeping the money, I may die one day. No. So 15 years is long time enough to dispose of it. How do you dispose of it? I told you the way. Well, this property, tell the family, look, I don't want to live this life without the guy coming. Because it's not going to part of my properties to be inherited. You can bring it to the masjid, to any place, with Islamic bias, do something. Sell it, do sadaqah for the owner. It's not commodity for selling. So now, do you think there can be somebody who need it? You shouldn't use it. If there is somebody in need, a Muslim, give you sadaqah. Say, I am giving sadaqah for the guy on it. Allahu Alam. Yes, as you just said, if somebody gives you um, a mana, you should write his number and stuff. In this country, all of us who have worked, if you go to a working place, they let you put your address, they let you put nest of kin. Allah Akbar. See? And his number. You see now? In case something happens to you, they contact the relations. So, as... This is Islamic said, system. Islamic system. Everything you give the information, even next of kin, Tell us about your younger brother, elder brother, your father. Give us a phone. Something happens. They can call you. It's very important. So please, we as Muslims should know this is part and the puzzle of our teachings. You are taking a loan, write it. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha tadayyantum bidaynin ila ajalim musabman faktubu wal yaktub baynakum katiban bil adl ayatu etu surah al-Baqarah Allahu Alam Thank you so much please our brother You okay? Yeah, people like to drive cars somebody just stopped in your car 
and you left. You don't know you have to find out. What do you do? Yeah, that is quite different. If somebody is driving a cab, you carry passengers, somebody leaves behind his cellular phones, what do you do? That's a very important thing. You take it to? As their own here. Okay. You take it to the prison. Okay. Or you take it to the garage. If the person has a ticket or a receipt, you will use the receipt to call 311 oh. and they will mention your medallion number or your car number and then they will trace it either in the garage or sometimes even call the driver and ask you to look in the car if there is a phone or something Allah in God. the car. So no, but sometimes this thing don't exist. You pick somebody, he pay cash, he left somebody in the car, he left. But I'm telling you, this is the system. No, you no, you no, give I it to the person, you no, give no, it to no, the... I'm talking about someone who left something in your car, you don't give him a receipt, he pay you cash, he drunk cash, he's gone. You send it to the person. The system here, if you lose your phone, no, you go... To, please, please. It's an example. It's an example. The system they did in this country, if you lost something, they have lost and fine. You go to the police station, they give you a form, you put, indicate all the items that are lost. If they find it, somebody brings it to the prison, they call you. Here, yeah, this and that and that have been found. You remember one Pakistani brother picked more than $200,000 hmm. at the back of his car. He went to the prison. Wonderful. And then they said, are you stupid? He said, no, that's not my money. And that's my religion. Allah the Allah. money is not mine. It's for somebody. And they called the person. And the person came for the money. So Allah that is Islam. Allah. That's actually the system. If, yeah. you, if they have a department of police or found that's in fine. the police department, they find everything just to send it there. But, but, but in case the owner is not found. That's, 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 that's their system. You are out of it. Wonderful. How many thousand you said? And the man went back. Allahu Akbar. He was about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. He was on the news. Mashallah, Mashallah. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Mashallah. Very courageous man. Very courageous. So please, uh, somebody there. Last question, please. Wa alaikum salam. Lost and found, yeah. Oh, who brought it? Allah. Oh. Okay, in case, beautiful, in case after looking for the owner, it proved unsuccessful, they call you through a camp and just collect it. Now you apply Islamic law, the Rishayt. Simple. It's, it comes back to you. You have already gone through the system of the nation. You are out of any trouble. Now it comes back to you. So apply your Islamic Sharia. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. Wa afina fi man afayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين